Do you remember when I was a kid in that spot by the trampoline where I always hid? The Princess, the Dragon, and the Very Bad Knight, written by Stuart Baum. Part 2. We rejoin the same story 13 years later. Princess Nisma has grown up into a beautiful, though still somewhat small, young woman of 16. Her puppy, named Puppy, grew into a big dog, named Puppy, got old, got very old, and, like all animals, eventually died. Her new puppy, this one named Droopsy, also grew into a big dog which is what he is now. Her father, the king, did not grow in size, but he did grow older. He also grew happier. His daughter was going to be married the following day. The man she was marrying was a prince named Aladrio. Prince Aladrio was from another land and was strong, tall, and as nice as anyone could be. The king was happy that Princess Nisma had found a man as wonderful as Aladrio to marry. Brophy grew up to be Sir Brophy the Knight. He was the biggest, strongest, fiercest man in the whole kingdom. He wasn't afraid of anyone or anything. Since he was so strong and so fearless, he was named the Royal Champion, and it was his job to rescue the princess if she were ever carried away by a dragon. But children, listen, because this is important. The only thing worse than a bad child is a bad grown-up. And unfortunately, Brophy was a bad grown-up. Or in his case, a bad knight. He still wanted whatever anyone else had. And the one thing he wanted most of all was Princess Nisma. He wanted to marry her and he was very mad that she was marrying someone else, no matter how nice or good that someone else was. Since he could not marry Princess Nisma himself, he decided that no one would marry her. He did not know what he would do to make sure no one married her, but he knew that it would be something rotten. Now children, you have to fly for a moment. While you cannot fly in real life, it is too complicated to explain why not. You can fly in a story. And if you want to see the dragon again, you must fly. Our dragon, like all dragons, lives at the top of a tall mountain. So grow your wings and come fly for a short while. Let's go see our dragon. Fly up into the air, across the land and over the small hills. Fly past the gigantic forest and over some more hills. Here come the tall mountains, and here we go. Up, 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 and more up, until we get to the very top of the tallest mountain in the world. Right at the very top, there is a cave. And in that cave, look closely but don't touch, is our dragon. He has grown up too. Like Brophy, the dragon has grown up to be very, very big and very, very strong. Fortunately, he has not grown up to be very bad. However, he has grown up to be very unhappy. The dragon still missed Princess Nisma. No one gave him a puppy, and no one was there to love him, so he was all alone on top of the mountain. Once in a while, he would fly down into the country looking for castles. When he found a castle, he would fly in, carry away whichever princess lived there, and, no, he did not eat them, he would look at them very careful to see if they were Princess Nisma. When they weren't, and they never were, he would put them back unharmed. Over and over he did this, and every time the princess he looked at was not the right princess, he would grow sadder and sadder. So look into the cave and see the biggest, strongest, yet saddest dragon in the whole world. But quick, let's fly back to the castle. Hurry now, fly as fast as you can. You don't want to miss what happens next. What happens next? Good, 
we got back just in time. Just in time for the party. Everyone, even Droopsy the dog, is at the party. It's the night before Nisma and Aladriel's wedding, and it seems as though everyone in the castle is as happy as can be. There are parades and jugglers and puppet shows and marching bands. There are elephants trumpeting, horses neighing, and all sorts of animals making all sorts of noises. Look at all these animals, shouted the king over the noise. There must be every animal in the world here. Yes, said the royal steward, who was also very old now. Every animal in the world, except dragons. That's right, said the king. There are no dragons. Then he thought about the time when Princess Nisma was a little girl, and she had a pet dragon. I wonder what that baby dragon is doing now, the king asked the royal steward. Probably carrying off princesses and eating them, said the royal steward, matter-of-factly. Probably, said the king, but somehow he could not imagine our dragon carrying off princesses and eating them. Meanwhile, Brophy had heard every word of the king and the royal steward's conversation, and it gave him an idea. It was a rotten idea. It was such a rotten idea, in fact, that when Brophy thought of it, his eyes turned from blue to brown, and they never turned back. After the party was over, when everyone was asleep, Sir Brophy snuck into Princess Nismo's room and stole her. He put her in a big sack and put her onto the back of his horse. Then he set fire to her bed to make it look as though the dragon had flown into the castle and carried off Princess Nisma. Then he galloped his horse as fast as he could away from the castle toward the tallest mountains in the world. He planned to kill Princess Nisma and leave her in a cave, so it looked like a dragon had killed her. In the morning, on the day of the wedding, Princess Nisma was gone and her bed was burned up. It looked just like a dragon had carried her off. Quick, said the king, call Sir Brophy, the royal champion. But Sir Brophy was gone too. Again, only we know that he had stolen Princess Nisma. Perhaps he has gone to fight the dragon, said the royal steward. Yes, said the king, that is what must have happened. Everyone in the castle was as sad as could be, even Droopsy the dog. They already missed Princess Nisma and hoped that Brophy would rescue her so they could have the wedding. Once again, children, you must fly if we are going to see what happens next. Quick, grow your wings. Grow your wings and let them carry you over the land, over the hills, past the forest, over more hills, until we get to the tall mountains. And there, halfway up the mountain, is Sir Brophy carrying the princess in a sack. And there, right at the top of the mountain, is a cave. Sir Brophy climbed to the cave and pulled the princess in a sack into the cave. Help! screamed Princess Nisma. Help! Someone please save me! Brophy opened the sack and let the princess out. At first she was happy that Sir Brophy was there. I am saved! she shouted. But then she soon realized that Sir Brophy had taken her and that he had pretended she had been carried off by a dragon, which all means, she thought, that he is going to kill me. Help! she yelled again. Help! I have been carried off by a very bad knight. Sir Brophy put his hand over her mouth. There is no use shouting, princess, he said. Nobody can hear you. We are too high up in the mountains for anybody to come rescue you. Sir Brophy was right. Nobody could hear her screams, but something could. Our dragon. Our dragon heard Princess Nisma's screams and knew that he had finally found the right princess. He quickly flew over to the mountain. It was just two mountains away, and he arrived just in time. Until you have seen a fight between the world's strongest knight and the world's strongest dragon, you have only seen skirmishes, disagreements, and meddlings. This was a true fight, a battle, 
a fire-breathing, sword-smashing, teeth-gnashing, shield-crashing battle like no battle has ever been battled before. First, the dragon had the upper hand, or wing, as it were. Then Sir Brophy had the upper hand. Then the dragon. Then Sir Brophy. Then neither. Then the dragon again. Then Sir Brophy again. Then, well, Sir Brophy again. Then, well, still Sir Brophy. Then it looked pretty bad for the dragon. Then it looked really bad for the dragon. Then it looked hopeless for the dragon. And you would think that Sir Brophy had won, and he would kill the dragon and then kill the princess. And that would be that. But the princess picked up a loose rock and threw it at Sir Brophy. The rock hit him squarely in the head. And he looked up for a second and turned toward the princess. And this gave the dragon his chance. He took a deep breath. So deep that he breathed in almost all the air in the cave. Then he breathed out the biggest breath of fire he had ever breathed out. Probably the biggest breath of fire any dragon had ever breathed out in the history of the world. Right at Sir Brophy. The blast of fire breath knocked Sir Brophy out of the cave and off the side of the mountain. It was such a long way down that he might still be falling today. In any case, Sir Brophy was never seen again. Princess Nisma got onto the dragon's back, and down they flew to the castle. They got there so fast that the princess had just enough time to say one sentence. She said, I will never let you go away again. But quick, children, don't just sit here in the cave. Grow your wings again and fly, fly, fly to the castle. You don't want to miss the wedding, do you? The wedding. No matter how many weddings you have been to, especially if you have never been to any, you have never seen a wedding like this one. Picture the world's most beautiful princess, dressed in a wedding gown so sparkly and white that it is too bright even to look at. Picture the world's most handsome prince, dressed in a tuxedo so smart that it could solve the world's hardest mathematical problems all by itself. Picture the dragon in a bow tie as the best man, or best dragon, as it were, and picture Droopsy the dog as the flower dog, holding a basket of dried rose petals and daffodils and all your favorite flowers. Still not enough? How about a wedding hall filled not just with people, but with animals of all sorts and kinds? And imagine them all dressed in people clothes, a lion in a suit and tie, an octopus in a fancy party dress, and a giraffe in a top hat. In other words, it was a wedding like never before, and it lasted all night long and through the better part of the next day. And, of course, everyone and everything lived happily ever after. The end. The end. The end. Do you remember when I was a kid? In that spot by the trampoline where I always hid In those sunscreen days, in those star-filled nights